All right, now it's time for disaster recovery. What keeps the top executives awake at night? It's the possibility of this. If disaster occurs, did they plan adequately for it? The CPA exam is going to require that you know the disaster recovery facilities that are out there, starting with what's called a cold site. A cold site is an off-site location that has electrical and other physical requirements for processing, but a cold site has no computers or files. The business paying for the cold site has to provide and install the equipment. A cold site is considered the lowest cost solution, and that's because it's essentially an empty office. It's not stacked with computers. Cold sites don't already have equipment. Typically, a cold site could take one to three days or more for the business to be up and running again. And that's why cold sites are useful for less critical applications. Sometimes a cold site is on a mobile unit, such as a truck bed. And if so, it's considered a mobile cold site. All right, what's a warm site then? A warm site's an off-site location with similar computer hardware to what you have already, but no files. The backup data files to recover will be delivered as needed, possibly as quickly as the same day, maybe the next day, depending on how critical. Because the warm site already has similar computer hardware, it's not an empty office like a cold site. A warm site is more costly than a cold site. And if on a mobile unit, it's called a mobile warm site. All right, now what are hot sites? Hot sites are used for mission critical applications. They're completely equipped, including the data, Hot sites allow for near immediate recovery within minutes or hours. Huge cost though, but quicker to recover than a warm site. And companies with similar needs can share a hot site and that'll reduce cost. Because if a company had to maintain its own hot site, that would be very expensive, even though it would be very quick to recover. So there's advantages and disadvantages to each of these. And that's what the exam will ask about. Like this, if a company's plan includes fast recovery with no downtime, they're likely to have what? Letter A, a cool site. Well, there's no such thing as a cool site, but there is a warm site, and a warm site would have recovery, but there'd be some downtime. The computers are there, but not the data in a warm site. Here, we want fast recovery with no downtime. We'd have to go to a hot site, and we would have to plan for that by having a hot site already and equipped with computers and data and that would be answer choice D. Because if a company's plan includes fast recovery with no downtime, they're likely to have a hot site and already have the computers and data files in an offsite location, ready to go if disaster occurs. Let's try this one. In the event of a disaster that makes the company's facilities unusable, Leo, the controller, has arranged for the use of an alternate location to be used as a data processing disaster recovery site, but has not been stocked with equipment Okay, so you got the site, but it has not been stocked with any equipment. What's that? That's a cold site, isn't it? Letter A looks good. It's not a warm site B, because to be a warm site, there would have to be equipment there. C, it's certainly not a hot site because there's no equipment and there's no files. And D, a holy site? I think we'll go with A here. Cold site based on the facts given. Because it hasn't been stocked with equipment. All right, how about a fully operational processing facility that is immediately available in the event of a disaster? That's known as, that's your hot site, letter C. Fully operational processing facility that is immediately available in the event of a disaster, that's a hot site. It's fully operational, meaning it has equipment and it has data files. Okay, regarding disaster recovery planning, which of the following describes a warm site? A says, Facilities and equipment are available on site, but still requires configuration and restoration of data files in order to resume processing. And I'd have to say that's pretty good because if we have facilities and equipment available on site, then we're getting warmer. We're almost able to resume processing. So A's working for me, but let's go to B. Facility with only electrical power on site and no computer equipment. Well, that's a cold site. The facts are looking for a warm site. C. Facilities have fully operational facilities and hardware immediately available without the need of any configuration. Well, that's a hot site, isn't it? But that's not what the question is asking for. The question is asking for a warm site. D says facilities on a mobile truck bed that have only electrical power. Well, that's still a cold site, just like letter B is, 
just because it's on a mobile truck bed doesn't change it to a warm site. That still describes a cold site because it has only electrical power. So the best answer is what? Letter A. Because a warm site offers a company a location with facilities and equipment already available on site, but still requires what? Some configuration of the system and restoration of data files in order to resume processing. If it didn't need any configuration of the system and already had the data files, then it would be a hot site and not a warm site. Now, backup files serve as a corrective control. In case they ask, it's not a preventive control to have backup files. It's a corrective control. It's not even a detective, but it's a corrective control. Business needs to be able to recover from power failure, equipment failure, errors involved in processing the wrong file. If you process the wrong file, that needs to be corrected. And if you have backup files, you could correct the fact that you processed the wrong file. What would be an example of processing the wrong file? Well, maybe you processed the payroll file, but it had a date on it, let's say of October 22nd. The problem is, although today is October 22nd and you processed the payroll file for today, you accidentally processed the payroll file for October 22nd last year, not October 22nd this year. And that would create errors and that would need to be corrected. And if you had a backup of the payroll file that was up to date and correct prior to today's processing, then that would serve as a corrective control. Having that backup file didn't prevent the error. It didn't even detect the error, but we can use that backup file to correct the error. And of course, power failures could create errors, equipment failures, natural disasters. And for all those reasons, the company needs a disaster recovery plan. That include things like redundant multiple backups. Usually you find one or more archives are stored on site, but at least one archive file is maintained or should be maintained off site in case of fire, natural disaster, terrorist attack. So having multiple backups, which is what the term redundancy means here, and having at least one archive file maintained off site should be included in our disaster recovery plan. So if there's a failure, what does the company want to do? They want to start by rolling back to an earlier point where they can trust that the data is clean. They have a backup of the payroll file that doesn't include today's transactions yet. Now they need to be able to determine where something went wrong. They realized after they processed the payroll that they processed the wrong week or the right week, but for the wrong year. So they need to be able to determine where something went wrong and then they roll back to the earlier point where they can trust that the data is clean. And then from the trusted clean data set, they can reprocess the transactions that occurred after. And that's how they'll generate a current clean master file and data set, even though there was an error. So those are the goals. And the only way you can achieve those goals is to have a good backup and recovery system. And there's some terms here that we need to know for the exam. Backup procedures may be full, which means you've backed up all data. Or you might have an incremental backup, which includes only data that has changed from a certain day or time when we last backed up. Or you might have a differential backup, which means only data that has changed from the last full backup. So your differential backup would include all data that changed from the last full backup, but your incremental backup will only include data that has changed since the last backup. All right, let's look at incremental versus differential backup. So let's say a company performs a full backup on June 25th, then performs an incremental backup on June 27th and another incremental backup on June 29th. Well, the incremental backup on June 29th includes only the data that changed since the incremental backup on June 27th. If the company performed a differential backup on June 29th and not an incremental backup on June 29th, then it would include all the data that changed since the last full backup on June 25th. And incremental has the word increment in it, and increments are blocks of time. So that's how you can remember that incremental backups are only data that has changed from a certain day or time when we last back up where a differential backup includes data that has changed from the last full backup. Good documentation is needed that identifies data set name, volume serial number, 
what accounting period is covered, and storage location. You need to consider privacy, security, confidentiality when you retain these backups. Backup plan must be regularly tested and reviewed. All right, let's try this question. Only data that has changed from the last full backup will be captured when using what? Well, it has the word full in there, right? So only data that has changed from the last full backup will be captured when using a differential backup. And that's letter B. In a differential backup, only data that has changed from the last full backup will be captured. All right, if a full backup was performed on February 1st and an incremental backup occurred on February 2nd and another incremental backup on February 3rd, the incremental backup on February 3rd would consist of what? And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section. And remember to like and subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot. And if you need more help with IT or any other part of the BEC exam, get yourself on I-75, the right road to passing the CPA exam. I'm Darius Clark, and I'll help you like no one has helped you before. And when you go to cpaexamtutoring.com, you'll notice the I-75 difference.